There indeed exists a patent adulteration of African history perpetuated by European colonists. This fact is unassailable and the very reason why African history needs to be rediscovered from a proper historical perspective. The extent of this topic cannot be covered in one video, and so I'm thinking we can make this kind of history into a series starting with the claimed perversion of ancient North African history. <laughs> What up African world, it's Son Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. Also, your support helps the channel grow, improving production quality and future animated projects. The link to Patreon is in the description box below. To begin, this video is not intended to suggest that all the work of this particular anthropologist be put into question. However, its purpose is to highlight the conditions and the context in which the work was completed or presented, and to reveal the problems that were allegedly confirmed later. The discoveries of Henry Lott has been called into question, and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll understand why. Despite the asterisks on his work in North Africa, opinions seem to be slightly mixed in the scholarly world, and that's fair to keep in mind. In spite of all the accusations, today, we're only going to be presenting what I believe to be the most glaring penalties to his supposed archaeological integrity. Alongside his most obvious skewed innuendos concerning the origins or influence of the work presented, Henry Lott was a French explorer and anthropologist. He's largely credited with the discovery of the Tassili rock art in Algeria. The rock art is ancient and considered to not only be of great importance to human history, but a piece of art and beauty. Anthropologists have been awestruck by the majesty of this ancient art. It was even called, and I quote, the greatest museum of prehistoric art in the whole world. The truth is, however, the rock art in Algeria had been known for quite some time, well before Lot's so-called discovery. Supporters of Lot suggest that it was common for anthropologists to take ownership of discoveries, despite it being known already to other professionals. This was especially the case if they popularized it. Aside from Henry Lot, European colonists in general have consistently repurposed African history to suit their own needs. This is a well-documented reality. Starting in the 1920s at a time when there were many expeditions in northern Africa, rock art research became a proper, although still embryonic, scientific domain, most often organized in the first instance for military purposes or for reasons of colonial governance. These expeditions introduced an extraordinary but still relatively unknown aspect of Africa's cultural heritage to international audiences. The limitations of colonial perspectives are well evident in these endeavors. The limitations deals with how local African people were viewed and treated during this time, advancing improper and biased perspectives. These colonial attitudes are readily apparent in the literature. Anything discovered in a so-called dark continent, deemed civilized or worthy, was usually attributed to people outside of the given region. And this is the context of Henry Lott's environment. Henry Lott's 16-month expedition into Algeria from 1956 to 1957 took place at the same time of the most intense fighting and the worst atrocities of the Algerian Revolution, a revolution between the French and native Algerian peoples. Him being a Frenchman was not a coincidence and an obvious conflict of interest. He had the full backing of the French political and intellectual establishment, with both military and civil authorities at his disposal. Though all of this information is a truth on the periphery, this may have had an impact on what we were later to discover and question. There is no doubt that Lot's expedition came at a most opportune time for the integrationists. Lot's press conference on his arrival in Algiers at which he revealed to the general public the greatest center of prehistoric art in the world gave the European community in Algeria just the sort of Philip that it needed. 
the publicity that his expedition gave to the Tassili paintings less than a year after the discovery of oil in the Sahara provided them with a cultural fig leaf in which to wrap their vehemently conservative, imperialist, and often racist calls for French Algeria. So from the onset, Lot seems to have been in a political environment that may not have helped in the integrity of his work. One of his discoveries was a legitimate image of a woman who seemed to have been decorated. In his work, he insisted on naming her the White Lady for whatever reason. Also, he and his team are believed to have outright fabricated a scene he titled Goddess with Birdheads, claiming Egyptian influence. Like his mentor, Lot had succeeded not only in linking wrongly the earliest of the Central Saharan rock art to Egyptian classical influences, but had also managed to superimpose European cultural values on both sites and paintings by anointing them with good classical European sounding names. The idea that Lot may have attributed some of the paintings to direct or indirect Egyptian influence can be largely disregarded. The tawdry attempts of alleged forgeries and fakes by he and his team, however, cannot be ignored. The principal one being the bird-headed goddesses, or the goddesses with bird heads. Another called into question is the Antonia. Henry Lott makes a point to connect the Antonia rock painting with classical Greek art, and he openly mentions that its features are of a Mediterranean type. Despite claims of forgery as mentioned previously, still, defenders of the Antonia's authenticity exist. At the very least, Lot's discoveries in Algeria have been called into question either by direct evidence and confession from team members or by suspicions of reputation alone. One anthropologist accuses Henry Lot of at least five fakes. One photographer on Lot's team openly admitted that a number of completely apocryphal paintings were reproduced. Two of these were held to belong to Egyptian art. All in all, what was the purpose of faking some rock paintings? A few seemingly being confirmed fakes. Well, the reasoning takes us back to the time he was in. A certain colonialist approach is also apparent in expeditions carried out in Algeria and Libya by Henry Lott and Fabrizio Mori respectively, after World War II. In the case of Henry Lott, Keenan underlined the westernized copies, sometimes totally fake, of many Tassilian paintings. In addition, a 1956 rock art expedition on the Algerian paintings at the Muse des Arts Decoratives in Paris was conceived to express the French colonialist power and cultural supremacy just during the harshest phase of the Algerian War for Independence. Evoking any form of European imagery or foreign influence by way of Egyptian cultural diffusion can be seen as a subtle attempt at demoralizing native Algerian history, civilization, and autonomy. The goal seemingly being to intellectually prime the population for a specific political agenda. Henry Lott did make some contributions to the Algerian rock art paintings in the form of new valid discoveries. However, the harm that was done to the history and the people weigh heavy. The result of Lot's activities in the Sahara is that later researchers cannot be sure what is faked and what is original. What has been washed away, the extent to which the landscape has been sterilized by what appears to have been an almost systematic looting of cultural objects and what has been excavated and left unpublished, lost or looted. That being said, Henry Lott was a man of his time, and his actions were not unusual for many archaeologists of the day. Anyway guys, I'm hoping to shed some light into the little discussed aspects of history like this as it concerns the adulteration of African history. When it comes to African history, there are plenty more accusations of foul play to uncover. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued development, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.